today I have a very exciting video for you guys. We are going to be taking a first look sneak peek with the brand new Jeffree Star Blue Blood palette. I have one in my hands. I thought since I have this, we would do some swatches. And if you watch the video long enough, then you will see a little mini tutorial of how I created this look. Really quick before we get too far into the video, if you guys could do two things for me. If you're not already, hit the button down below, subscribe, become a member of the Swamp Family, and also if you could leave a like on this video. Both of these things really help me out a lot and I'm very grateful for the support. Before I do the swatches, let's just look at the packaging. Oh my God. I talk about this a little later in the video, but this is Rich's palette. Literally when he knocked on my door and handed this to me, I think I audibly gasped. Very similar to the Blood Sugar palette. Did this come out in 2017 or 2018? I feel like this was a 2017 moment. There are some packaging similarities. We have these really awesome little clasps here. This one looks more like a trunk and this one looks more like a casket. This palette has 18 different eyeshadow shades in it and I'm showing you guys a clip of this palette earlier when I first got it because some crazy things have happened here tonight. More on that later. I did the swatches a little bit differently this time because the past couple swatching videos, you guys had some suggestions and critiques. Many of you guys were saying like, my swatches were coming out so pigmented. It's kind of like, what's the difference between the swatch or just looking at the eyeshadows in the pan? What I did is in the center of my hand, I would kind of like layer the shade to really pack on the shade. Then in the bottom of my hand, I just did a single pass swatch. And then a lot of times I move to my arm to kind of do a blended out swatch or to just show you guys. These are some of the softest shadows I've ever touched in my life. Like, look, I'll just freaking do it again. Like, look at um, Blue Blood, for instance. Like, I feel like I'm barely touching the shadow. Literally barely touching it and look at how much pigmentation is there. We'll do another one. I don't remember what this one is called, but like, look at that. I feel like I barely touched that. We have a lot of mattes in here, a couple of foils, and a couple of shimmers, but it is mostly comprised of mattes, if that is your thing. I feel like there are shadows in here for everybody. If you like kind of like deeper, darker makeup looks, you can totally go very dark with this palette. If you like brights and more like neon shades, you can definitely go that way as well. I feel like there are some very daring, super bright shadows in here. And then there are also some very soft shadows if you're not really into like super bright dramatic makeup. So I really feel like you can take this palette in a lot of different directions. So let's just jump in with the swatches. Let's go through swatch by swatch with these hot descriptors. Look, I could almost be a DJ. The first shade in here is called Cullinan. At first when I looked at it, I was I was sincerely trying to read this word. I don't know what this word is. I don't know what this word means. A Cullinan is a type of diamond and it's also a Rolls Royce, which you think I'd know because I do love cars, but I don't. Furthermore, it's also an Irish name for boys and girls meaning handsome. So any Irish Swamp family members out there, you gotta leave me a comment down below and let me know how common is it in Ireland, I Ireland, to hear Cullinan used as a descriptor. Right off the bats, this palette snaps. This shade is a freaking gorgeous, like if you took an angel's wings, crushed it up, which I don't know why you would do that. That would be disgusting and profane. But if you did that and turned it into an eyeshadow, that is what this shade would be. It is a extremely pearlescent, gorgeous white. Up next is a shade that I love. It's called Minty. It is a very bright teal turquoise shade. Lovely. 10 out of 10. Moving along to Crystal Flesh. 
extremely metallic, a little bit almost on, can I say chunky metallic? That doesn't sound good at all when I say it like that, but um, it is a very metallic, almost like a tan, fleshy, taupey kind of shade. Could definitely see this being used all over the lid for a ton of different looks. Shade number four is called I'm Cold. And was anybody else scarred as a child by the episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark where the little kid dies? This disturbed me so much. Like the sick weird stuff we were exposed to in the 90s that was just rated A-OK -okay for the kiddos. But it's this kid and he literally dies in the cold. And then his ghost just wanders around saying, I'm cold for all eternity. This shade is a deeper blue, kind of companion shade to mint tea, very kind of teal turquoise, but a darker, darker, deeper shade of turquoise. <laughs> Next is Untouchable, which I think is meant to be a very soft transitionary shade. I think that a few of these shades were put in here, obviously, to balance out the other 50 shades of blue. That way, in case you just wanted to use one blue shade at a time to really like get a popping blue, but you wanted the rest of your eye look to be very natural neutral, or you just wanted some shades that were more like flesh tone to balance out all of the blue. Blue. Uh, this shade I think would be very good for that transitionary blending. Next shade, which is also very soft, so blendable, it's called Priceless. Very much like Untouchable, I think it is in here to be a nice soft transition shade amongst all of these pow in your face blues and teals. Second row, first shade is called Power. And that is, oh my God, does anybody call this color cornflower blue? It was like, to be honest, the crayon I dreaded encountering as a child. Doesn't make a great crayon, but it does make a beautiful eyeshadow. Uh, this is more along the lines of a navy blue. I could see that this would be great for darkening and deepening up the crease. Next shade, Blue Blood. Definitely one of my favorites in the entire palette. This shade is so incredibly soft. You get so much gorgeous color payoff. Just a bright neon. Can we say neon? It is kind of neon. A bright electric blue. Next is Deceased. And that is one of the very metallic shades in the palette. It is a bright blue. Once again, uh, I feel like it could be a companion shade to Blue Blood because they're extremely similar. It's just one is matte and one is very metallic. Up next, another one of my absolute favorite shades, which is called Ice Tray. And it is an extremely metallic shade, a gorgeous metallic baby blue. I am overwhelmed by the gorgeousness and gorgeousity of that shade. Up next is one of the most pigmented matte shades in the palette, which is called Blue Monday. Love the little cloud and the lightning bolt stamped into the palette. Last shade on the second row is called Flourishing. This is also another one of my favorite shades. It is a very bright, deep, teal blue. I know I've used turquoise and teal as descriptors for like three shades in this palette now, but you know, turquoise teal comes in many different shades. Third and last row, first shade is Wealthy. Once again, I think that this is meant to be one of the matte transitionary shades. It is a little bit more bright, especially on my skin tone. I could see that this shade would work wonderfully as like a brow bone highlight or a transition blender shade. Next is Celebrity Skin, which is so fun to see in an eyeshadow form because if you guys are fans, followers of Jeffree Star Cosmetics, I believe this is the fourth 
product that he's made called Celebrity Skin. We have uh, the little bullet lipstick in Celebrity Skin, a liquid lippy, uh, and a lip liner pencil. And now we have this eyeshadow as well. As a little bonus, I swatched all of those things together so you guys could kind of see the lipstick shades as well as the eyeshadow shade. They are a little bit different. I definitely think that the Celebrity Skin eyeshadow shade is lighter and more more taupey where you'll kind of see a little bit more of a rose tone to the lipsticks. The next two shades are to die for so I don't know why I was about to say hike up your panties. What does that mean? I think I was like put put your big girl panties on. Ugh, I hate that phrase. And also uh what's the other one? I have so many colloquialisms about panties. I'm disturbed all of a sudden. Uh anyway entitled is the next shade. This is a gorgeous foiled shade. If you're somebody like me and you love to use extremely metallic and foil shades on the center of your eyelid, I do that a lot. You're gonna love this shade. It is incredibly pigmented. And the next one is called Ocean Eyes, which just freaking breathtaking. What can I even say about this shade? It is an extremely bright, pigmented, super metallic, royal blue, freaking breathtaking, amazing. I know I've already said 10 out of 10, but this one is like a 12 out of 12. It's amazing. Next is very spookily called cremated, which makes me think I'm just rubbing someone's ashes on my eyelid. <laughs> Anyway, that is a very dark, it's kind of like a gray, like a gray blue, ashy, people ash kind of shade. It's just your uncle on your eyelid, maybe. I that, that got very dark. Definitely could be used as a liner, in my opinion, if you're like me and sometimes you like to use eyeshadows as eyeliners to kind of smoke things out, but make it not as harsh as using like an actual liquid or gel liner. And then lastly, Continuing with the death theme, we have Undertaker with a little coffin stamped into the shadow. How about that? Uh, and once again, that is just a almost like a culmination of many other shades in this palette. It's like a navy, but almost like a royal blue navy, like a little bit of a brighter, deep color. Kind of just everything. How would we describe this? Can you guys describe this shade better than I just did? I bet you can. All right, now into a makeup look that I think I'm filming next. So I do did feel a little intimidated by this palette because if you guys know anything about me or if you know anything about the looks that I normally gravitate towards, they are very smoky neutral shades. Sometimes I do reds and oranges, but very rarely do I get into like greens and blues and stuff like that. Mostly because I feel like when I wear blue eyeshadow with blue eyes, it's a little bit much. I kind of started filming a tutorial and then I just got carried away with trying to learn how to use colors like this. So now this video is a spontaneous challenge where I have one eye done and one eye very clearly not done. Can she do it? Can I replicate this look onto this eye? Can I remember all the steps that I just did five minutes ago? You guys are gonna have to let me know if y'all are like this as well, but I feel like all the time this eye always turns out better than this eye. If my eyes were doing some sort of dance together, I don't know anything about dance. Why am I trying to make a dance analogy? But you know, like one person is supposed to be the partner that leads the dance and then the other person is just supposed to go along with it. I feel like more often than not, this eye just starts being like animal from the Muppets. I feel like I'm doing just like crazy stuff on this eye and this eye never turns out the same. Anyway, we shall try. So the only thing that I have going for myself on this this eye that I already did is start out with Bite Beauty's Multi Stick in the shade Blondie. This is like Max Paint Pot Painterly, you know, tutorials on YouTube. Everybody starts with the same step. Uh, this is my equivalent of Max Painterly Paint Pot. I feel like I can't do any eyeshadow looks without it. So I started with that and I am 
terrified to show you guys what I have done to this palette. What happened here? I am just going to go in with Celebrity Skin and set my eyeshadow base, if you will, and kind of go into the crease to give us a good blending canvas. And then I'll tell you guys what I did to this palette. So this was actually Rich's palette. And because he loves me so much and because I was so excited to test this palette out myself, he brought it to me. So I feel like I'm getting a super sneak sneak peek. And he had actually swatched it before. And before I put it onto my actual eyeballs, I wanted to sterilize it with 99% alcohol, put it in an autoclave, and then scrape the top layer of eyeshadow off. So we are really hoping for zero deaths here. It was never applied to anybody's face, so... I'm pretty confident that I'll be okay, but also you guys know that I'm insane when it comes to germs. And actually, unfortunately, my entire family has type A flu right now. So just take my normal germophobia and then like multiply, you know that guy? Oh my God, what's the Drew Carey game show? But you know, like the that was my yodel. You know the yodeling guy? where he just steadily goes up the mountain until he screams and falls off. That's me. And that's my fright of germs. What I think I did next was go in with the shade Cremated. Oh, look at the baby reflection. Cremated. And deepen up the crease with this dark, I almost said dark negative blue. I meant navy, uh, dark negative blue right in the crease there. I know the next thing I did was go in with this next shade, which has some other death name, Undertaker. Just kind of mixed those two colors together to give us a, God, everything I'm saying right now makes no sense, but like a dark, bright crease. So now excuse me for the next 45 minutes because I'm just gonna go through and blend and blend and blend and blend and blend and blend and blend. Then what I did is I went in with this shade called Ice Cold up here because at this point I realized I had sort of made a mistake and I wanted to be able to do more of a blue look instead of a navy look. Does that make any sense? Like I wanted to be able to incorporate some of the brighter blue shades. And I feel like if I went to with the browns and navies that it might look very silly. So I went through and used ice I'm cold, sorry, there's one called ice tray and then one called I'm cold, but I went through and just kind of blended all these colors together uh, so that it would lighten up just a little bit. I felt like I was so sassy when I just said that phrase, like lighten up eyeshadow. They're not twins, they're sisters. Don't people say that about eyebrows? Who comes up with these catchphrases and then I feel like just everyone says them for the next 50 years? You know what phrase I haven't heard in forever and I just thought about it the other day? Get your goat. You know that was coined in like the 1800s when people just had goats everywhere and somebody would just holler out, get my goat! Or like maybe somebody would steal your goat, you know? Cause get my goat kind of means like, you know, kind of like, get somebody agitated or something so i mean where does that phrase derive from is it in regards to goat theft was goat theft a big problem in like the 1800s you'd think i'd know since i was there the next thing that i do is go back through with blondie and i sort of reapply that all over my lid when i'm using more foiled eyeshadow shades or eyeshadows that i want to really pop i guess i would say so we're just gonna lay this all over the lid. I feel like when I have a palette like this that I feel like I love so much that has so much choice in it that I'm just like overwhelmed the first time I use it because I'm like, I just want to use them all. I just want to use them all at once. But I think I did pretty good on this side for me and 
for kind of like the first time in 20 years that I've used blue eyeshadow. For the inner corner of the main lid, wow, I've never heard of that main lid in my life. I used ice tray. So I'm basically just packing that shade all over the inner corner of the main lid. Then for the outer corner of the main lid, I'm going in with ocean ice. O ocean eyes. My god, I've literally just knocked eyeshadow all over here that I don't even remember um what the shade names are anymore i was inspired by this horrific mess that i've made today out of this palette and sophia i've decided i'm going to crush up all the shadows in this palette mix them together and see what kind of blue shade that it makes that's probably gonna be my next video so if you love destruction stay tuned for that oh i love that color i would recommend honestly buying this eyeshadow palette just for those two shadows like if there were no other shadows in this palette i'd buy this palette for those two shades they are amazing i am in some other kind of mood today and hopefully you guys are finding it enjoyable. If not, I'm apologizing. Next thing I did was take basically a blank brush and dip in with the wealthy shade, which the remnants of that is down here. I'm just kind of going through and trying to blend everything out, softening it up so that I don't get too Mimi. Next we're going in with Colleen Ham and I'm gonna dip into that and use these beautiful crushed angel wings to really brighten up while I'm just covering what I'm doing with a mirror now. And then I'm gonna blend that out because as it stands it looks like I just majorly f***ed up every other step I just did. That is basically it from my memory. <laughs> kind of the same, the same but different. Lastly, I went in with this beautiful Jeffree Star Liquid Lippy. I believe this debuted with his Alien launch last year, but this is in the shade YSOTP. One of my favorite things to do when I am going for brighter, more daring looks like when I do oranges or reds. I love to use Jeffree's Velour Liquid Lipsticks as eyeliners. With all the other blues that we definitely have going on today, the liner doesn't really stand out that much. I was just using it because I thought it would be a more interesting choice than just plain black eyeliner. That's it you guys, case closed on this palette. I highly, highly recommend. I am thrilled about my eye look today. I ended up basically going with no lip, like I blended out the Celebrity Skin lip pencil, but I think I'm trying to like relive my high school days. I used to only do like heavy eye makeup and no lips. And pretty much I was like that when I first got on YouTube too. I don't know what I was thinking, where I was like, heavy eye makeup, no lipstick. Why not? At this point, I think it's safe to say that this palette is on par with all the other Jeffree Star Cosmetics palettes. I feel like Jeffree just works so hard on his products that they always just knock it out of the ballpark. The last one that I was super obsessed with was his Alien palette. And at the point that that one was released, I was like, oh my God, how are these palettes gonna get any better? and now we have blue blood. I just feel like the variety, the edginess of an all blue palette, the quality of the shadows, how easy they are to use and blend, how just like vibrant and awesome they look. Like I just feel like overall it is a 10 out of 10 eyeshadow palette for me. So if you can grab one, they drop on the 29th. And I'm not sure the pricing. Stay tuned though, because we are going to destroy it, mix it all together, and see what kind of amazing 
monster we can create out of that. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you watched all the way through and you're still here to hear this outro, an extra special thank you. If you're not already and you'd like to be, hit that button down below, subscribe, become a member of the Swamp Family, and give an alligator its wings. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see y'all again very, very soon.